What's up, guys? Today we are going to create a league overlay with your stats and everything and whatnot. Um, we're going to be writing it in standard HTML, JavaScript. I didn't really use any CSS except for Tailwind, so yeah. Um, the first thing we need to do, I just come in here, hit open file or open folder, uh, wherever you want to make a folder, new folder, we'll just call it League Overlay, League of Legends, not Rocket League, okay, and select folder. So we're now in this folder. So the first thing we're going to need is, um, I'll just call it League underscore overlay dot HTML little HTML file, right? Uh, we'll just start off with HTML. Uh, we'll give it a head. And we'll put a link in here. With, um, it's gonna be self-closing. Uh, your href is, I'll put this in the description. So I'll put this in the description, but it's just gonna be a tailwind import which is all nice and handy for easy CSS. So let's give it the body and make our first div hooray. And this is good. just gonna have class height 1920, uh, height 1080 pixels by width 1920 pixels. Uh, next, add another div with the class name, just height, full width, full. Make another div, and we're going to give this a class of flex, flex. Uh, row with one half background gray 200 min height 50 and that is all good and dandy uh, next add another div and I know this this is just how HTML is if you've never really worked with this before, it gets annoying. We're gonna do flex flex call space four with full text to Excel font bold item center justify center. All right, and now we will have a span element with the class um, text blue 600 and inside we'll have wins dash losses make another span class name text white and this will have an ID of win loss, right? So basically, if you're not familiar, if you want to learn more about this, I will do a brief explanation of all of this right here. We are making a row to store all of our elements, um, our win loss, our KD, gold earned, Mm, turret damage. If you want a really good example of this, you can basically look on any of the boss FF, FFs. Look at the boss FF, the boss FFS. Sorry. Um, look at any one of his videos, and he has a cool overlay that someone probably made for him, or he made, I don't know. And he has, I believe it's KD, win loss, and turret damage. 
So the row will be storing all of these. And now the next one is we have, this will be one of our elements, this div. And it's gonna be a flex call. So the first thing on top of the column will be your wins losses, your wins over losses. It'll just literally say this in blue. And the second thing will be right under it in white. And we will make this, once we get into the JavaScript, we'll actually make this uh, your actual win loss in the past uh, during your stream. So what we can do is copy this and paste it right here. And now we have the same exact thing. And what I'm going to do is change blue to red and change wins loss to kills deaths. And then change the ID to kill death. Okay. Easy enough. I'm going to add one more. And it is going to be text uh, yellow 600. And it will be total gold earned. And this will be total gold. So now we have three elements, one, two, three, that we will uh, later in JavaScript make these dynamic. Okay. And now go to the last div and add your script. Source is going to be, actually I'll put this one in here too, in the description I mean. Um, your first one is going to be an import for Axios, which you will need. And your second one will be script and a source that equals script.js. Okay, and that is it. And now you can hit run, run without debugging. I'm just going to open it in Chrome. And now we have this. And you might be like, ew, that looks like nothing. Well, it basically is nothing right now. There's basically nothing here. Um, but if we change, uh, let me just look real quick. Okay, sorry. Um, we don't have to run it yet. So for this specific one, um, I'm going to have my logo and I'm going to have this kindred banner, basically background banner thing. So I'm just going to put them here. I'm not going to put them in a separate folder. doesn't really matter. You can like images and then put them in and that'll look fine. All right. So now we have an images folder with your logo. If you want, you don't have to have your logo and your kindred or whatever background you want uh, can make it. basically kindred. I basically mean kindred or NAR. So I just chose kindred. All right. Now what we're going to do is Um, so we're going to add another, not a class, but we're going to add a style and it's going to be background dash image colon URL parentheses quotes. Um, Images slash kindred league background. That one. Okay. Now we can do a semicolon and add another one. Um, background position Y center. Let's save. Now, if we run this, you will see this. Um, you can see the background behind it. Now, well, why isn't it all big? Why is it just so small? Well, 
we have to fill it with our other stuff. So just at, as an example, let's say our win loss was four and three or something. Save it, you can open this back up. Now we have four and three, image gets bigger and whatnot. Okay, we don't really need that right now. And don't add four and three, just keep it blank. The next thing I'm going to do is right under this, I'm going to add an image, a self-closing image, and it's gonna have the source of images slash I'm so bored logo with the class MX3, uh, MY3, an alt, because we just need an alt named logo. A width of 60 and a height of 60 as well. Now if we run it again, there's my logo and there it is. Um, yeah, I'm also going to add in this class for the background, just add background cover. And that looks a little better and gets it centered on the screen. So we have our basic HTML and we will now move on to the JavaScript. So you can add a new file, call it script.js. All right. Now, this is the most complicated part of the tutorial. Before we write anything, we're going to need some variables. Go to developer.riotgames.com and log in. All right, once you're logged in, you should come to a screen that looks similar to this. I would hit register product and uh, and then personal API key. I agree. Just give your name, give it like a league, league stats overlay for Twitch. Just do league stats overlay. And then just write a quick description saying overlay for my Twitch streams. Okay. And then product URL, you can just do HTTP. Actually, you don't even have to put one in. So don't even put one in. Just choose default group. And then you can't do this with Valorant. Just League of Legends and then hit submit. And then you should see your API key right here. So I would use this copy, come back to VS code and do const riot underscore api underscore key equals quotes uh shit uh paste okay and now we have our riot api key so that part wasn't so bad however unfortunately it gets a little more complicated um because we are going to be doing this with Twitch. So you can go to dev.twitch.tv. That is not the one, dev.twitch.tv. Log in with your Twitch. And you should be at a page that looks like this. Go to your console, go to applications and register an application. Name, you can call this league overlay and then your oauth redirect url https or http local host 3000 hit add okay category oh god it doesn't really matter i'll just do 
browser extension. And you can just leave this on confidential and hit create. There you go. So now, don't worry about this one. That's my real one. League overlay. You can hit manage and right here is your client ID. Copy your client ID, come back to your script. Const client underscore ID equals this. So here's what I'm gonna say about this. Do not share this with anyone. Do not share your keys with anyone. I am using keys that I'm going to delete right after. So nobody else will know what my keys are. However, it is good practice to make a local environment file. However, you are not sharing this with anyone. You are going to use this for yourself. You are going to stream this and all they will see is the HTML that you made. This is just backend stuff and it's pretty okay to keep this where it is as long as you're not giving this to anyone else to use. If this is for your own, if you do give it to someone else, tell them how to get your their Riot API key. Tell them how to get their Twitch client ID and their Twitch secret, which we will go over just now. But right now, I personally think that it is okay to keep these actually in your JavaScript file and not in an environment file. Okay. Go back to dev.twitch and hit new secret. Okay. Here's your secret. Make a new variable const client secret equals this. Okay. Now we get into some of the hardest parts. So go to, you can click on docs where you were, at, like if you were in your console. Now go to docs and hit authentication. You're going to need an authentication key, basically. And all we need is a user access token. So in order to do this, we need to getting OAuth implicit. So let me just actually read over this real quick. So getting these keys are kind of annoying. I'm not the best at all of this stuff. So if you want to help me out in the comments, if you know actually how you were supposed to do this, let me know. But this is how I'm going to do it. So just open any text thing. Uh, I'll open notepad. All right. Copy this question mark. All right, we're going to add our parameters. So first parameter is client underscore ID equals and now we need our client ID right here equals this and redirect underscore URI equals HTTP localhost 3000 and response underscore type equals code and scope equals scope actually doesn't matter in this case but you need to give it a scope so we are just going to do uh channel and then the uh the url and code for a colon which is percent three a manage percent three capital a polls Okay, that's all we need. And we don't need the state right now. So this is our URL that we just made. Copy it and paste it. You will have to hit authorize. Once you hit authorize, then it'll say, oh no, 
This is, that was a problem. This is your code. Copy your code and go back to your code. <laughs> Lots of code. Const code equals this. Okay. Now, after getting that code, we need to get a token. And in order to do this, we are going to actually make an async function main and just do main. And it's going to await fetch. Oops, nope. You can do const params equals. Okay, client underscore id equals. Actually, okay. So const params tilde. Um, let me actually do this. All right. Client underscore ID equals client underscore ID and client secret equals client secret and code equals code and grant underscore type equals authorization underscore code and redirect underscore URI equals HTTP local host 3000. So we should have this really long params thing. Now what we can do is const response equals await fetch tilde this question mark param params and now const and then I think we can just console.log response. Okay. Now if we hit run, or actually I don't like doing it that way. Open a terminal, node script.js. Okay, we do need to const data equals await response.json. And then console.log data. Okay, and we can node script.js, page not found. Ah, oh, right, okay. So actually I got this wrong. So come down to your terminal. We don't need the thing anymore. We will do npm i axios. I already have it, but we will just get it. All right, and now come to the top and uh, const axios equals require axios right so instead of this we can do axios dot post okay and then console dot log the response and now we can load run node script.js and right here we have data so this is the hardest part I apologize for getting the fetch thing wrong now we have our access token we have our refresh token const access underscore token equals this and const refresh underscore token equals this. Really, we only need the refresh token, but I just like keeping the access token in here as well. Congratulations, you have done the hardest part, the most complicated, most annoying part of this all. And the reason for me it's the most annoying is because in order to get this code, you can't run it as a script. You actually have to go in and hit authorize. 
which means that a script cannot do it. I mean, you could write something to do it, but okay. Congratulations. We can now begin coding. Okay. First thing we're going to do is remove this Axios import. The reason is because in our HTML, we actually imported it right here. And if we just have const axios equals require, it won't work. In our main function, we're just going to keep these here. Uh, main function called. Just a little reminder. All right. Const live equals await is live. And now we are going to write our async async function is live. All right. This is going to have a const response that equals await axios dot axios dot. Okay, wait. so it's making me capitalize axios, which I don't want. So I'm just going to keep the const axios equals require axios for now. But at the very end, we will delete all of it. So await axios.post https colon forward slash forward slash id dot twitch dot tv slash oauth2 slash token comma null comma open bracket and in the bracket we have our params which is going to be client underscore id is client id client underscore secret is client secret our grant type is going to be refresh token. Refresh token. And our refresh token is going to be our refresh token. What the hell does this all mean? We are getting our access token back. So console.log uh, fetched token token Wait, what? We have a const token equals response response dot data dot access underscore token. Now we have a const response one equals await axios dot get and oh, dot get and another URL, HTTPS forward slash forward slash API dot twitch dot TV slash helix dot streams. And this is where you're going to do user login equals I'm so bored. And for the next one, headers and we need the headers authorization bearer and our token and we need client dash id is our client id All right, well, this is all getting a little confusing. Basically, 
This one, we are refreshing our token, saving our token. I spelled response wrong. Response. Saving our token to token. And then we are using this token to get information of whether this channel is live. Next we have, I'm just going to console.log fetched stream info. If response one dot data dot data zero dot ID return response dot data dot data zero dot started underscore at and if not return false okay so what is this doing first uh, we are checking if there's any information inside data the first thing in in the array because it will return an array with all of the streams that have this username uh, and if you have more than one name then you'll have to look at the data and figure out which one you are but it, you should be the only one i'm pretty sure this question mark is just to say that you know if this is null it won't even have an id in the json so you wouldn't be able to it would throw an error so and if there is something there then we return when the stream started and if not we return false all right we are done with the is live method next we have const stream underscore start equals get time utc live okay now we have another function to write function get time utc and inside the parentheses we have started underscore at so we have const date equals new date started underscore at and we have const millies which equals date dot get no date dot get time and now we return millies so basically what this little function is doing is just getting when your stream started and converting it into milliseconds and the reason we're doing that is to match it up with the data that we will get from the riot api um just so we that so so that we can compare the two times all right back in the main function we have if stream start is equal to zero so if it's equal to zero that means you're not live then console.log I'm so bored bored is not live okay and then document okay this is where it gets a little this is where we start implementing the HTML document dot get element by ID kill death dot inner HTML is offline okay and we can copy and paste this twice just remembering to change the so we are changing this parameter with the id of each of the elements whichever elements whatever you name them that's what the id is and uh I had win loss first, so I'm just going to move this up one. All right. And then after all this, return zero. And that'll, that'll just end the program, basically. Okay.
const PUUID equals await get PUUID. All right. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. Async function get PUUID. This is a pretty simple one. Console.log fetching PUUID. const response equals await axios dot get and, and uh here we have um I'm trying to think of all right so before we put in our URL we are going to need another file Riot usually does not let you. So in order to fetch Riot information from through a script, basically, we need a proxy server. So we're going to add another file, proxy.js. All right. So we are going to open our terminal, clear, npm i express. And that will download, and now we have it. All right, good job. Const express equals require express. Const axios equals require axios. All right. Const app equals express express. Const port equals uh, we're just going to give it 3,000, all right? Now we have app.use express.json. App.use request response next. And we're going to open our arrow function. Res.set header. This is going to be access control allow origin star. So basically, this one basically fixes it all. That is, it's basically saying uh, uh, allow access at the star means any origin. Res.set header access control allow methods uh, I'm just going to use cap caps like get post put options patch delete okay the next one is res dot set header access control allow headers and this is going to be x requested with content type and the last one is res.set header Access control allow credentials. And this is just going to be set to true. And this is not a colon, this is a comma. And now we have next. Right, app dot use forward slash. Async res, well, it really should be rec res. Try const response equals await axios, parentheses, open bracket, method is a rec dot method, 
URL is a rec.query.url. Our data is rec.body. And our headers are authorization rec.headers.authorization. Okay, and then we have, after this, we have res.send response.data. Really, you should do this catch right after, catch your error, and it's res.status error dot response dot status dot send error dot response dot status text capital T. All right. Now we have app app dot listen to your port. And the arrow function, we have console.log tilde server is running on port dollar sign per, uh, brackets port. All right, this is our proxy server. I'll put this in the description. But if you were following along and, and typing all that with me, congratulations. You're le probably learning something. Uh, this, I you need it okay i'm not going to give you any more explanation than that all right after we have our proxy server we can come back to our get pu id function we don't need that um all right axios dot get tilde dollar sign brackets um, actually, we have to do something first. We need to add another global variable, const riot proxy server equals HTTP localhost 3000. All right. All right. That's pretty simple. Now, come back to get PUUID. Dollar sign brackets and we are going to do riot proxy server and your brackets uh, this is getting all messed up because of stupid tab line question mark URL equals HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash um, America's dot API dot riot games dot com slash riot slash account slash v1 slash accounts slash buy riot ID slash I'm so bored slash six nine six nine question mark API underscore key equals dollar sign brackets riot API key what the hell is that this URL can just be found uh, on the riot documentation so you can go to developer.riot and find it there and this is just to get your PUUID which you don't really need but it makes it easier console.log Fet, uh, fetched PUUID, hooray. Const PUUID equals response.data.PUUID return PUUID. Congratulations, we did it. Go back to your main function. And after calling get PUUID, you're going to call const uh, matches equals await get mat get mat oh my god capitalize matches and you are going to pass in PUID 
and that's it. Also, I forgot to mention, in this URL, um, Americas, you can change to, let me actually pull up the documentation. So with account, we did this one. And your region is either Americas, Asia, Esports, or Europe. You can change it to whatever you are. I'm Americas, and they're all lowercase. So, All right. Now we make another async function get matches with a PUID in the parameters. And this one isn't too bad either. Const response equals await axios dot get and we're going to do basically the same thing riot proxy server question mark url equals this time i'll show you actually how to find those urls so go back to developer.riotgames.com and go to apis now for league, we are going to be using match version 5, and we are going to be getting it by PUUID. Actually, okay, the way you would do this is you would console.log your PUUID, and then it would give you your thing. But I don't have my PUUID, and I don't feel like doing that, so we're just going to copy. Okay, it is HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Amer uh, Americas.API dot riot games dot com slash lol slash match slash v5 slash matches slash buy dash puid slash dollar sign brackets puid slash ids question mark api underscore key equals riot api key now we have console.log fetched fetched match ids i'm gonna get a little lazy now const data equals response dot data because we really only want the data in this if not response dot status equals 200 then console dot error data dot status dot status underscore code data dot status dot message and throw a new error something went wrong all right and outside of this if statement just return data all right now that we have our, all of our match ids we are going to create a bunch of variables that store our stats basically let kills equal zero, let deaths equal zero, let wins equal zero, let losses equal zero, let, let total gold equal zero. Okay, we're just initializing them. Console dot, uh, we don't have to do that, sorry. All right, four, let i equals zero i is less than matches dot length i plus plus const match info equals await get match info with your matches at i so this is going to get the match info for this specific match that we are currently on so we need to make another 
async function get match info with a match ID parameter. And we are going to const response equals await axios dot get. I'm going to speed run this part. Riot proxy server question mark URL equals HTTP HTTPS Americas dot API dot Riot games dot com slash lol slash match slash version version five slash v5 slash matches slash and then your match id goes there slash no no question mark api underscore key is equal to your Riot API key, hooray. So you could have wrote a function for this stuff that like, so you don't have to write it all out, but I don't know. Console.log fetched match. Okay. Const data equals, uh, no, we don't need that. Const data equals response dot data. And we have if not response dot okay. Console dot error data dot oh data response dot data dot actually we don't even need this part. I'm just going to live without it in both of these. Screw error handling. Return data. All right. <clears throat> I think that's, those are all the functions that we need. So now we can just continue in our main function. Okay. I did not spell this right. Matches. Matches. There we go. All right. Let's if match info dot info dot game creation is less than our stream underscore start. So this is where it all comes together. <clears throat> We're basically saying if the game was created before our stream started and it doesn't count, then we just break. Const player equals match info dot info dot participants dot find. And we're going to find a player arrow function player dot riot ID game name is equal to your in-game name, not your Twitch name or anything. And then we can kills plus equal player dot kills, deaths plus equal player dot deaths, player dot win, wins plus equals one, else losses plus equal one total gold plus equals player dot gold earned all right and the final thing we can do is document dot get element by id kill let's do win loss dot inner html equals tilde kills dash uh no no not kills wins dash losses and now we can copy this paste paste change this to kill death 
change this to kills, change this to deaths, and change this to total gold, and change this to just total gold. Okay, now the last thing we have to do also, congratulations, you got through my boring ass talking through me coding. Well, we don't need these access tokens or codes, so you can just delete them. We also don't need this Axios import anymore. And the final thing we have to do is come down to the bottom where you call main and do window.add event listener. And it's going to be a DOM content loaded. And we are going to run an async function. Uh, like this. And we are just going to run await main. And that's it. We are done. Now, let's see if it works. I'm offline. So, I'm offline. Uh... I'm going to open my phone. I'm actually going to turn on my webcam so you guys can see this. Hello, everybody. I've been talking to you the whole time. I have my phone open and I'm going to open Twitch. And I'm going to hit create. I'm going to hit plus and I'm going to hit stream IRL. Stream. I am now live on my phone and I'm going to refresh my page. It still says online, offline. Well, we just have to wait offline. Okay. Right here. What happened here? So Twitch one uh the twitch api uploaded saying that i was live why isn't zero 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 showing across the board well if we look in our dev tools and check out the console cannot read properties of undefined zero that's not what i, what I was expecting it to say in our is live it doesn't matter um i think if i refresh it'll probably say the same thing it doesn't matter but it's working but it's not showing anything because our proxy server is not running so this is the most unfortunate thing about all of this you have to open a command prompt go to where I just went to the correct drive that I was in. Go to your league overlay, copy this and CD there, and now node proxy.js. And it should say server is running on port 3000. Now refresh, and it still says nothing, which means it is this problem. Type error, cannot read, whatever. We are going to fix this in real time. So it's in our is live function. I did this. I'm going to console.log response. Okay. And refresh. Status 200. Data access token. That's all good. That's not the problem. Let's do. Wait, I never get to fetch stream. Oh, I did. Okay. Console.log response. Oh, I see. I see. Our problem is I have response, but it should be response one. So save that and now run it. 
now fetched our PUIDs and it got our match IDs and our matches and it's a zero 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 because I have not played a game since I started streaming. Yeah, congratulations. You have also I'm sorry I was not showing that. Hold on. Sorry, I just realized I wasn't showing that. Basically what I had was this. It was just response dot data it has to be response one dot data because we are fetching the second one and not the first one we are actually referring to the second one and not the first one sorry and congratulations you have successfully made this little overlay now how in the hell do you use this i'll show you in stream elements hit add source or add a, what does it even say? Yeah, add source, browser source, add. And we are going to add a new one and just call it league overlay, add. Now, usually if it's stream elements or something, you just put the URL and hit enter, it's all good. Here, we have to hit local fire, file, browse, go to where you saved your thing, Visual Studio Code, League Overlay, and it's the HTML document. That's the one that we want, and hit open. And it should show up right there. Change your width and your height to 1920 by 1080, and you can just get rid of all that custom CSS. And I like to refresh source, refresh browser when scene becomes active. So now we have our League Overlay, but it's kind of weird to use. You can hold alt and drag it and hold alt and drag it to kind of get it around the overlay. Now you can make it big. Oops. Don't hold alt there. And then I just have mine like something like that or like, like that at the top. So that's, that's basically, that's basically it. Thank you guys for watching. I know my hair is crazy, but you couldn't see me that whole time. So that's good. Here's a light. Boom. I was red for a second. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this helped. I hope you like this. I know it's not the Valorant one, but maybe I'll record that video right now. I don't know. Thank you for watching. If you like this kind of long form coding one, let me know and I'll do more. Thank you guys so much and peace out.